Here we go. Here we go. At our church, Jesus is Lord. That single belief calls us together as a community and sends us into our world with hope and purpose. At our church, your past will never define your future. There's always redemption, which means there's always a brighter day. At our church, we don't think we're better than any other church out there. We're just doing our best to become our best. At our church, we want you to believe in God, but we also want you to know that God believes in you. We are not against people who don't attend church anywhere. Instead, we pursue them with love, the very same love that's pursuing us. At our church, we're learning to serve God with all our hearts, and we're learning to worship Him with all our lives. And if you're looking for the perfect church, we're not it. At our church, we will make mistakes, but we will choose to grow from them. At our church, we're part of a global community that's knit together by the resurrection of Jesus. And by the way, at our church, we believe that really happened too. At our church, we will engage with people who are in real need because we are the hands and the feet of Christ. And finally, we need you to hear this loud and clear. At our church, it's not really our church at all. It's His. And we live and move and breathe in His church for His glory and His fame, not ours. So here's the invitation. You're invited to jump in with your whole heart at your own pace and to experience the life that awaits you in Christ. Friends, this is going to be good. Welcome to our church. Good morning. We're so excited to have you join us on this wonderful, beautiful Sunday morning. We're going to go into a time of worship. We have a few songs prepared. So wherever you are, we hope that you enjoy and that you join us in this time of worship.
Jake and the praise and worship team for leading us in worship and we want to continue in worship today not only with our tithes and offerings but today we're going to gather together to uh, take communion together so let us pray as we seek the Lord and uh, as we go into this time of worship with tithes and offerings and in the Lord's Supper Lord Jesus we thank you for the opportunity that we have to give back to you, not only with our tithes and our offerings, but as we partake in communion together as part of worship, Lord. We give you our lives and we thank you that you're with us each and every day. And as we read the word here in a moment, we just reflect on the fact that you tell us to remember this and to continue to do these things, to remember you and uh, what you have brought us through, what you've done for us, Lord. So I ask your blessing, not only in the tithes and offerings as we give in worship of you, but as we prepare our hearts right now for the taking of communion and just uh, being involved with the Lord's Supper, Lord. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And the word it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I want to read starting in verse 23, where Paul says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this, and whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And along with that, when we think about this and as we practice this, it also says in verse 29, For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. And he tells us that we ought to examine ourselves in verse 28. And before he eats and drinks of the cup and takes of the bread. So I just want to take a moment and just ask the Lord to, to reveal to us anything that we might need to take care of. So would you pray with me? Lord, as we prepare our hearts even now to partake of the bread, which is a sign of your body, and of the cup, which is a sign of your blood, a symbol of your blood, Jesus, we just ask that you would show us in our hearts right now that if there's sin, unconfessed sin in our lives that, that we need to bring to you, God, that you would convict us of that, that you would show us that. Lord, we, we thank you that you look deep inside of us and you reveal to us things that, that we may need to straighten out. And uh, I pray that right now in the name of Jesus that you would just minister to us as we prepare our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Now as we prepare, I just want to ask each of you to take the, the bread or the cracker that I've asked you to prepare and uh, let's pray over each one of these symbols of God's Christ's body as we partake. Lord Jesus, I thank you that what you have done for us, that you have went to the cross and even before that lived a life of example before us. And now as we hold this, this uh, symbol of your body in our hands, Lord, I pray that you would bless this as we partake of it. We remember what you have done for us, that you died for us, that you took the beating for our sin, for the sin of this world, and personally for me and for each of those that are out there partaking with me. And I pray that you would bless it as we remember what you have done for us and what the cross has done for us. And as you were crucified on that cross and as you came down off of that cross, Lord, the victory that is in the resurrection of your body. And Lord, we pray now that you'd forgive us of our sins, that you would cleanse us and just make us whole and healthy and help us in life as we press forward each day in Jesus' name. Bless this symbol now in Jesus' name. You may partake this morning. Thank you, Jesus. As we take the cup now, which is representative of Christ's blood that he shed for us. And we know this, that the blood of Christ is, and through our faith in what he has done, and, and through our faith in Jesus Christ, that he justifies us, he cleanses us through his blood. And as we partake of this symbol, which represents his blood, we say that we agree. And as we confess our sins, knowing that he cleanses us of all unrighteousness, as, as 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 says. So we ask today as we pray, Lord Jesus, that, God, that you would, as we partake of this symbol of your blood, we recognize that the blood of Jesus Christ gives us victory, that it's the blood of Jesus Christ that, that ended all the sacrifices of, of sin, of the propitiation of God's judgment, and, and God, that now, as the, the blood of Christ washes us and cleans us and covers us, we know that we are justified through that blood that you have shed for us. And we ask your blessing as we take of this cup this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for taking time to participate in the Lord's Supper with me this morning in communion. And as we just think about moving forward into the message this morning, just a few announcements as we talk of these things. But uh, I'm just so thankful that the days of the coronavirus, we know that it, things continue to, uh, depending on where we're at, continue to go up and down. But we know that maybe that things are opening up here soon and we're looking forward to being back together again as the body of Christ in the, in the building itself. So I ask you to be 
patient with that as we move forward in these coming days and weeks, looking like right now that we're going to be back together as at least in some services starting about the 17th. And if you'll just keep an eye on messages uh, coming through text and email and on Facebook, we'll be putting out further information for those things. But so thankful for the opportunity to get together. Also, please pay attention to uh, YouTube and Facebook today for Pastor Wes and Stacy's uh, message through, for Kids Zone for the kids. Again, does such an awesome job. Just so proud of him and what he's been doing and what they've been doing as a family, getting that message out to our kids. Uh, keep an eye out for those things that are involving with Elevate Youth Group. I know that he's been in touch and staying in touch with the youth, young people and doing those lessons. We're excited about all the things that are going on right there and the outreach that we've been able to have. So just keep your eye on these messages as they come out and uh, just be informed with where we're going. And if you ever have any questions or need prayer, of course, uh, call us. We love you guys. want to stay in contact with you. Again, any of the information that you need for connections, you'll find in your email and your text. And you can also find at the end of the message today, connection points that we have again today from 1130 to 12 o'clock or 1230. We're going to be having prayer. You'll find the links that you can connect with us on Zoom for those prayer times. So as we go into the message, let's just pray God's blessing on the message today. Jesus, we thank you for this time together. We pray that, God, that you will bless us as we move into the message today and bless each one that's listening. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Greetings, everyone. It's so good to have you with us. My prayer is that you are doing well these days and that you're finding comfort and peace in your relationship with the Lord along with the provision in every way. I know we live in challenging days and, and maybe we're feeling well, times of being restricted, but I'm so glad for the many opportunities that are arising for us to be the church and minister to those around us. A message that can strengthen us and carry us through in, in a vibrant and a thriving way these days. Our family is finding comfort and encouragement as we're in God's word and times that we're being like the governor says, North Dakota smart with family and friends. We are soon approaching days in which we're going to be able to be together again in a limited capacity as a church family. So hang in there. The day is coming. I know that we're all looking forward to being together again. But as for now, let us continue to be the church that has left the building and the church that is ministering and meeting needs in our community as they arise. And speaking of that, not only are there physical, emotional, and financial needs but also spiritual needs. As we're ministering to others out there, we are taking a step into a new series today talking about the basics of faith. And through this series, we will be wrestling with those basics of the Christian faith that, that make us who we are today in Christ. A, a return to the fundamentals, we can call it. A return and a refreshing. Maybe even a, a fresh revelation once again of things forgotten or, or maybe not thought of so much. These are great messages that of topics that build us up and remind us of our, our roots and our foundations. So today we're going to talk about faith and what we put our faith in and why. Uh, would you pray with me as we dive in today? Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your word today. Thank you, God, again, that, and we're reminded of your word, what it says, that your word is sharper than any double-edged sword, and it's able to, to pierce into the, the very being, the depth of who we are, and, and discern things in our lives. And, and Lord, you're able to put things into our lives through the word of God, because it's good for teaching and all these things. So I pray today that you would use your word today, and as always, we pray, Lord, that we would have ears to hear, the eyes to see, and hearts to understand what you want to say to us through your word and by your spirit today. God, teach us, and just anoint me as your vessel today that I may speak into people's lives, and we ask it in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. You know, as we look at this, what is the definition of faith, as we look, start looking at the basics of faith? Uh, the definition of faith, according to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, says that faith is an allegiance to duty or a person. Uh, secondly, a belief and a trust in and a loyalty to God. 
And thirdly and finally, something that is believed especially with strong conviction, especially a system of religious beliefs without question. And that, that's kind of coming at it from a worldly secular view looking at that, but also giving us some things about the Christian view. But I want to take a look further. Zondervan Encyclopedia of the Bible says that the definition of faith that's central to biblical thought is that human faith is that which responds to and is sustained by God's faithfulness. Another says that faith on the part of a person should lead to faithfulness. So this is taking more of that biblical central thought view of it. Now, the idea of faith uh, can move from the subjective, or subjective attitude, which is really based on or influenced by personal feelings, tastes, or opinions, and is really dependent on the mind for existence, um, to the faith which... God is revealed objectively, which of course is not influenced by our feelings, opinions, thoughts, uh, you know, for existence. But through deed and word and sign in order that it should be trusted. So when we think about this, just read that again. The idea of faith can move from this objective attitude to the faith which God has revealed objectively through deed and word and sign in order that it should be trusted. So God has really done things and moved in part so that we can see. He's done it through deeds and words and signs so that we can understand who he is and we can understand and trust him in that way. And as always in the scriptures, the divine initiative is emphasized or assumed. So he really initiates. He moves first. Uh, so that we can see that. And the fact that the living God is willing to enter into relationship with us and has shown us that he is worthy of our trust. That's really what gives biblical faith its distinctive character. Now, what is most important when it comes to faith? What is most important? Uh, what's most important when it comes to faith is this, what we put our faith in and why. I want to use a simple illustration for understanding today. What is most important when it comes to faith and what we put our faith in and why? And I want to use a chair as an example. Most likely every day you sit on a chair or in a chair. Uh, you're most probably sitting in one even now. Whether it is a chair with four legs or maybe it's a stool like I'm sitting on with one single pedestal. But each time we choose to sit on something like this, we are putting our faith and trust in, it, in the chair to hold us up. And we firmly believe that the materials that it's made of and the, the way it was constructed will hold our weight up and not send us crashing to the ground in a heap of, of materials. The why here is what causes us to act in faith, to set in the chair. We, we can see the chair, we can see the materials that it's made of, and if we look closely, we can even see the way it was constructed. But undoubtedly, we hardly ever look closely or examine the chair in which we're sitting in unless it's clearly in bad shape and clearly looks unstable, kind of like this one that's coming up on the screen right now. So unless something is clearly and visibly unstable, we're acting in faith and in trust that the craftsmanship was adequate to hold us up. We probably don't even know who constructed the chair, but we are putting our faith and trust in them that they have done an adequate job. You see, we put our faith or our trust in things every day without knowing all the facts. But based on our experiences from the past and what we can see with our eyes and, and what we don't see with our eyes, really. Think about it. When you purchase something at the store, you look it over and you check the quality of its construction as, as best you can. And what you can't see, you act on faith and trust. You don't know who put it together except for the company or the brand name that's on the product. And if that product doesn't hold up when you put it to use, your faith and trust is affected. And you probably won't buy that brand of product again. You see, the who and the what and the why of faith is important. And it affects us. On the other hand, we have relationships with people. From the time that we are a baby, there is faith and trust being built inside of us without us even knowing it. From the time we're born and our parents are holding us and taking care of us, it's happening. Unknowingly, we are learning to have faith and trust in them to know what we need and act on our behalf. Until finally one day, we are grown and we're mature enough that we're putting our faith and our trust in other people. There are those that, that we learn through experience 
to trust in, like our parents, and, and not to trust in also because of experience. Those experiences either build or tear down that faith and that trust that we have in the person and in the relationship. We can also be taught about faith and trust by people. But it most often still comes back to our experience and whether that faith and that trust stands over time and is built or it's tore down. So literally, we put our lives our, by faith and by trust into the hands of things and people every day that we don't even know, that we don't even see. And with a little thought, we could, we could make a big, long list very quickly, including cars, planes, trains, and the people who operate them. Every time we get into a plane, we're trusting that pilot or that co-pilot to know what they're doing. Every time we, we jump into a car, we're not only trusting the people who made the car, we're trusting all the other people that are out on the road driving also. So now, after wrestling with that, what faith is, and talking about what is most important when it comes to faith, what we put our faith in and why. We want to wrestle with putting our faith in something that stands the test and is dependable, reliable, and consistent. So when we think about those three words, dependable, reliable, and consistent, it eliminates pretty much everything except for one thing. Because the government, our financial institutions, our health, and, and this is sad, but even relationships, some relationships don't even always meet these so it leads us to one thing that meets all three of these, being dependable, reliable, and consistent. The Bible, the Word of God. And I want to wrestle with that. Um, the Bible, the book that really has, best, has been by far the bestseller of all time and has been translated into more languages than any other book. Literally, the Bible means book. But what kind of book is the Bible? Is it just a, a religious record of encounters with God? Is it a human book? The Christian church has looked at it for some time as the, the written word of God. And we know that God is the leading character in this book because the first words are, in the beginning, God. Right from the beginning, God is giving us information about himself and telling us about the purpose he has for all creation, all of us. And how we look at the Bible is so important because it, it reveals to us that God does exist. And even how we can know Him and have a relationship with Him if He does exist. It is in the Bible the tool that God has chosen to use that He reveals Himself and His true character. The dependable, the reliable, the consistent and and, and when we think about the dependable, reliable, and consistent God that he is, it is through documented history, stories, and events that, that we find out where we have come from, why we are here, and even the end of it all. He gives us what Scripture says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, that the Word of God is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man or the woman of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And further, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, he says, There are everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him, Jesus Christ, so that we would have what we need for life, for instruction, for encouragement, for discipline, and for wisdom. There is so much that we can cover here, and I've put more in the notes for you for further, a further look and for study, but there is more than we could ever cover in such a short time. So let's move through and talk about some of the things that we know and we can prove that the Bible, the Word of God, is. You know, God has revealed himself through the Bible, and it's really an indication of supernatural, supernatural origin. And as we think about that, you know, looking further, nature and the entire cosmos, everything we look at, are evidence of a powerful designer. And it didn't happen by chance. And there's so much proof of that. Secondly, we see that through history, God has revealed himself, particularly in his dealings with Israel and the nations surrounding it. And that's just another historical thing that we can see that is prophetically told about in the scriptures. And, and lastly, here, the words of the prophets were also instruments of God's revelation as they interpreted their circumstances and, and sought God's will. And we see these things fulfilled one right after another after another. We go on and we see that God provided a written record through the Bible. 
And when we look at the Bible, we see the, the 39 books of the Old Testament, the first books written here. And they took 1,100 years to write these 39 books. We look further in the, in the books of the New Testament, the 27 books of the New Testament, and we see that those books, it took 100 years to write these 27 books, and they were compiled and put together. Then we go further, and we see that God's Word is inspired. And we, we think about God's Word being inspired. It is a book that took over 2,000 years of history and, and put it together. And it has one single thing, and that's incredible. That you take a book like that, all these things put together over 2,000 years of history, and it still has one single theme. We look at the Bible, how it origi originated in God's mind, and, and really not in human minds. It's inspired. It's inspired literally means outbreathed, that it came from the mouth of God. And we look further, and we see that God's word is the primary source of religious belief. And further, in that, when we look at that, is that out of the four possible sources, when we look at the sources that, that all religious things look at, really, tradition, uh, human reason, existential encounter, which means basically an, an emotional experience, and then fourthly, the Bible itself. You know, out of all those, the Bible is recognized, it's supported and verified by rational investigation. The historicity of Jesus Christ himself and all of the other possible sources Really, they must be submitted to the message of Scripture. And last, based upon repeatedly accredited evidence of modern archaeology, we can trust the Bible with confidence. You know, I had a professor once that said this. He said, every time that a shovel goes into the earth and, and digs up something new, uh, another liberal is buried because archaeology continues to prove that the Bible is true. And we go further. You know, and I want to ask you some questions looking at all this. When, when we look at all this evidence, and I know this is a brief overview, and there's no way, like I said, we can cover it all, but when we look at all this evidence, what about you? After listening and joining in the Word today, you know, where do you see yourself at? Where do you see your faith at? And what is it that you're putting your faith in and why? Is it the Word of God? Or do you find yourself searching questioning and, and wondering. God desires to have a relationship with you. And remember, he has initiated this whole drama, this whole story, because he loves and he cares about you and he cares about me, about us. And when we look further, so, and I want to say this, if, if you find yourself questioning and wondering and searching, you know, it's okay. Because if you will just ask him, ask God to reveal himself to you, and you will earnestly seek him, the promise in Scripture is that, that you'll find him. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 8, and you can look these up. Luke chapter 11, verse 10. Acts chapter 17, verse 27. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And I love that, that we can do this on video because then you can always pause it and you can go look and you can come back to these things. But, you know, this, these Scriptures talk about us seeking him and finding him. There's a promise that comes with these verses. And this is only the beginning of a great adventure with God. And all, all it starts with this, the basis, basics of faith. Because faith in God's Word, faith in God is so important. And in a moment, we're going to pray, but I want to paint a picture for you right now. A picture is of a group of people that are so committed to the message of life, the message of love and of encouragement as we build each other up in our faith in these days. A picture of a group of people who will do whatever it takes on our knees in our prayer closets, on the streets greeting people, in our workplaces working side by side in relationships, and in our homes fellowshipping and breaking bread together. In making sure that people know that they are loved by God and can have a relationship with Him. Ministering to felt needs as they arise, comforting one another through hard times such as these and encouraging one another each step of the way to grow in Christ and in His Word. That's what I see in Valley City. That's what I see in Barnes County in this area. You know, a city thriving with love, encouragement, goodness, and the many fruits of the Spirit that we see in Galatians chapter 5. With God's help, we can and we will see a group of people, a community of people, a city of people arise in new and powerful ways. I believe this. 
You know, I want to end with this. In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11, it says this, and many of you know this, but it says, So is my word that goes out from my mouth, God says. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You know, his promise here is this, that when his word goes out, that it will do what he says. It will impact lives. It will change lives. It will give us something that changes us. And that's my prayer, even as I share in these messages, as always, that God's word will change not only me, but change you, change our communities, change our cities, change our states, change our nation, change our world, because God desires, again, to have a relationship with you and with me, with all of us. Let's pray today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you today, God, that you would use your word, even as we're entering into this, this uh, series on the basics of faith, and we've tackled some things with faith today and, and what we believe in and why we put our faith in these things. And I pray that you would use these things to stir our hearts, that you would use these things to question things, that you would use these things to create a strong foundation inside of us that would lead us to you, to Jesus Christ, your son. I pray that you'll help us, Lord. And I just pray right now for all those out there that may be seeking today. They're asking questions. They're desiring answers. And, and maybe they've struggled with this. But God, I pray that as they ask that question and they're sincere in our hearts and they say, Lord, I really want to know. God, I want to know if you're real. And I know that, God, when we ask those questions, that you reveal yourself. And I pray that today, that, God, that you will open up minds and hearts and eyes and ears to see and hear and understand who you are that you would draw us into an intimate, close relationship with you. So help us, Lord. And I pray that you bless your word today to our hearing, God. And we ask it in Jesus' name. You know, I just want to say thanks. God bless you guys. It went a little longer than 15 minutes today, but I, I just know that this series is important for us. And uh, I'm looking forward to speaking these messages to really cause us to think and look back. God bless you today. I pray that you have a great day and a great week.